always a pleasure. I think it's been, Jesus, nearly a year um, since I've spoken with uh, this man, uh, Reese McKee, Balamina's finest. Um, obviously, Reese, first of all, my friends, you're, you're in your van outside your gym. How, how's life? How, how's life with the new gym? How, how's everything going for you, my friend? Yeah, life is busy. Um, we're getting over lockdowns and we're kind of opening up again. So, uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, business is booming and, and things are going well. So we're in a good place and in the mighty Balamina. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, Reese. It's obviously it's it's been a roller coaster. Twelve months, eighteen months for you. Obviously, getting signed with the UFC. You took that exceptionally short notice fight against Kamzat Shimaev. Didn't go your way, and obviously that fight against Alex Morono. You know, I think everyone loved watching that fight. You got released after that. You know, what were the emotions like, first and foremost? H how did you feel? How did you take that? Yeah, as you said, like a, an absolute roller coaster. It was up and down and up and down. Um, when I got released, initially, I was kind of like, to be honest, I was kind of the, I was the one, I remember straight after the Morano fight saying to Rodney and, and my other cornerman, Ryan, that, that that would be my, me being released. And they were like, no, no, no chance. And everybody in the kind of Irish community, MMA, said I wouldn't be, but i kind of just had that opinion and then when i was it was kind of like oh flip it was you know it, it is what it is and um i think you know i was definitely given the short straw i was shafted in, in the biggest possible way i think um if you look if you if you look at all the people that has been signed in the uk recently i believe i've got the hardest right um you know and i'm not saying that in a way where i think i should have been kept it's just i think i was given that tough route and uh it is what it is, and now it's now it's time to, to get the path on the way to get back to there where I belong. So um, a bit of work to do now, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm over it now. You have to be. So, you know, it was a bit of emotions. I totally agree with you. You know, I spoke to you after the fight, and, you know, it was it was a great fight to watch. We saw what Alex Morono did against Cowboy Cerrone, and I know you'd actually mentioned Cowboy to me, um, I think, when we were chatting as well, as you were t potentially talking about wanting to fight him after you... you, you you felt you were going to beat Alex. So is it bitterness, Reese, mm -hmm. with the promotion? Because obviously we saw what, you know, what he did to Cowboy Cerrone. He utterly destroyed him. And, you know, you went three solid, hard, good rounds with him. That must have been even more frustrating watching that fight afterwards. Yeah, you know what? I'm not bitter towards about the situation or the promotion. Um, it's still... The reason I want to get into the UFC in the start and still do is because it is the most prestigious promotion in the world. The fact that you can't you can't go in and lose two in a row is everything I love about it. So for me to hate the game now and say, oh, I should have been kept and I hate the UFC would just be bullshit. Um, I like the fact that you can't go in and lose two in a row. I never thought I would lose two in a row in my career. It's the first time. Um, so... I'm gonna, what is it, live by the sword and die by the sword. And, um, you know, when I get back there and, and win all these fights in a row, it'll, it'll make more sense. So, not better, but um, definitely confu more confused. I think confused would be the best word. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. I think it was, it was absolutely insane for them to, you know, release you. But, you know, sort of looking on now and at those two defeats, was there any regrets jumping in, you know, for that first bout against Cam's that now that the dust has settled and we're into 2021, you know, you took the fight, I think it was six, seven days notice against, you know, obviously one of one of the top um, welterweights in, in, in the UFC, you know, he, he's a guy yeah. that is good, definitely, I think we all know he's going places, we've seen the comparisons towards Habib, is there any regrets now that the dust has settled that you, you jumped in in short, short, short notice for that contract? I mean, if you if if I knew I was going to lose the next two and be cut, I, you know, of course I wouldn't have t I wouldn't have done it. Mm. But um, no regret, no regrets at all. It was the most amazing, fantastic journey, um, over over the space of a, a short period of time. So I, I don't regret anything at all because it could have been so different and we could be having a totally different conversation. Um, you know, like it, it is what it is. It is the best way, and and you know the risk the risk was wasn't as big as the reward. The reward was bigger for me. Um, now I've just left myself back with a bit of work to do, but it was no more no more work than I had to do when I beat Hack and Foss anyway, and I, I was fighting to get signed anyway. Mm -hmm. So I've done it once. Uh, I know what's possible, and I, and I'll definitely do it again. Reese, what were the conversations like with the UFC? Um, you know, when you left the promotion, because you sort of we've had conversations about it, and you've more or less said, you know, they've told you to to go out and get a couple of wins and you'll basically be automatically back in the promotion. Is that the way you left things with the UFC? Yeah, very much. Um, I was, I, I, I got, uh, I got let go from the UFC on the best possible terms. It was very much, 
you know, um, go away, get your get your fights, two or three fights, two or three wins, and you'll be back. They also looked after me in, in another way, which I'm sure you can maybe guess, but they looked after me in a way mm. um, th- which was an incentive to say that, that I will be looked after. So, um, yeah, listen, I, I left. Can you say, was, was, that, was that a bonus? Can you say? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, they they financially looked after me for Brilliant. for a bit. So um, I don't know if that I don't know if that was due to the release or due to the Murano fight and how good a fight we had. But um, you know, it definitely helps in circumstances. It made it a, a bit less bitter. But um, yeah, I know it's not the way people are normally cut. People are normally cut and said, right, go have a, a nice life. Where with me, it was like we look forward to seeing you back. And I I believe it was very smart from the UFC to release me when they did. And the reason I think that is, um. I don't think that they wanted me to lose more fights within the promotion. I think they would have rather me come in there and winning all the time because I think they had big plans for me and I'm confident they do. So I think it was smart in their behalf. What did Rodney say to you after the, you know, the, the two performances? Because, you know, even if you listen to the commentary and I totally agree with you, I think Michael Bisping was, was saying how good you were, how impressive you were in the fight, even in the last Alex Morono. What, what were Rodney's thoughts about the whole situation in that fight? Yeah, we were all just very shocked. Um, the Morono fight is disappointing for me. It's the worst performance of my career. Yeah, I was going to ask just you that. Fought. Yeah, you, I just, you, you were saying um, that. You weren't happy with the performance at all that night. Oh, bizarre. It was so strange. I had this, like, 10-week training camp where, like, we planned, uh, I, I'm not big in game plans, but I definitely have specifics. Uh, I believe Morano was going to come gunfighting the way he did with uh, Cerrone and even Pettis. But he sat back and drew out a different fight in me, which was, it shows how experienced he is that he knew I, I would, he knew I would mess up before he probably did. And, and I did. So in, in a way, I, I kind of feel like I deserve that because I didn't come in with the experience and IQ that I have or should have performed then. So um, it was the worst performance of my career. So we were all just shocked. Um, that being said, nobody thought I was going to get cut. They, you know, we thought mm. it was a good show and thought we would have got a nice, like proper fight bonus. Um, but it is what it is. And again, it's it's how we act now. That's going to be key in the next step. Did you actually speak to Dane after the fight? Uh, no, I didn't. Well, no, no, I didn't. I didn't speak. I spoke. I spoke for a party of the UFC uh, it's hard <laughs> in the UFC you don't, you don't get to talk to anyone it's, yeah. you're talking free people so um, I had really good conversations with them before I left and stuff but uh, yeah it was still still strange looking on like you know I think you just need to look at like sort of the Brandon Moreno route you know for you like what an incredible story that was you know guy you got, got cut and he's, he's, he's I think around about the same age as he maybe a little bit older mm-hmm. but does a guy like that give you give you inspiration when you, when you see that sort of story it yeah, put, course, puts, puts juice in the belly, doesn't it? Of, of course, it's you know, like you, Niall, you know me long enough to know I'm not the guy that I'm not doom and gloom. I'm not. Nobody would expect Reese to be moping about and, and saying he's retired and stuff like that. I know, I, I've done it before. I've done it under harder circumstances. Um, I'm only 25. I was 24 when I got signed. I'm ridiculously young for the sport. Um, D- Moreno definitely uh, motivates me, uh, but nobody motivates me more than myself. Like I want that journey to be mine, you know. So, um, like again, I always use a Matthew McConaughey speech. I motivate myself because I'm, I'm myself in 10 years, you know. And I think that that is a strong way to be motivated. If if you, you are your own motivation, then how can you go wrong? Definitely. It's, it's not a bad way to, to look at things, Reese, at all. And obviously you're under an intensity fight management. What have the conversations been like with them in relation to what you're going to do next? Or what, what do you feel you want to do next? Because I think a lot of people, um, you know, presume you're going to be fighting with Cage Warriors. I don't think there's anything official yet as far as you're concerned. What's, what, what were the talks like? What, what, what do you want to do next, Reese? Yeah, if I'm being honest, the talks have been very minimal. Um, we haven't we haven't chatted much. We did chat briefly after the release. Um, you know, what did I want to do? And it was very adamant for me that the the I want to go back to the UFC. I, I didn't think that was a question. So uh, for for that, the straight route is obviously to be through Cage Warriors. That being said, I'm 25. I'm young in my career. Uh, I feel like I've completed Bama. I've completed Cage Warriors, and uh, now I feel in my career. I want to be excited again. I want to. Um, I don't want, I feel like I don't want to go, it's like when you complete a video game, you don't go back to the video game to complete it again. You know, you kind of get a new game and then you go complete that. That being said, I do understand there's a there's a process to this and, and if the straightest route means go back to Cage Wars, then that's probably what I'm going to do. But for that to happen, it needs to be exciting. 
it needs to be a nice European name or someone else who's been released or I'm just not going to go fight some uh, five and O guy from England. And I don't mean that in disrespect to them mm. guys, but um, I'm in a different stage in my career. I, you know, I fought anybody that they've ever put in front of me. I've never said no. Um, I, I'm the A side here. I'm, I'm the name right now. And, you know, it does more for people to beat me than it will for me to beat them. So until then, until I feel we both set at something with the table, I'm not trying to sound too much like Mayweather here, but until we both have something at the table, um, you know, it needs to make sense for me. What does make sense for you? Is there anything there that tickles your fancy that does make sense for you in your opinion? Right now, no. Right now, there's definitely not. Um, you know, I think, I think right now, to be honest, and I, I spoke with Ian, uh, Ian Dean, who's a matchmaker. I think Cage Warriors is at the weakest point it's ever been. Um, wow. In terms of in terms of welterweight, like think about it when we had Dalby and Lahore and and Santos and. You know, before that, it was Danny Roberts and uh, Louis Gleesman and all these, Craig White, all these massive names. At the minute, we just don't have that. Like, like no offence to Jack Grant, but we have lightweights fighting and welterweight. We have people in the tournaments that were coming off losses. And, like, um, you know, it's fantastic to see an Irishman have the belt and Ian Gary. But I just think I would like to see that, the, that, that division spike up and some more European names come in and, some former UFC guys like myself come in and I feel like it would really up the stock and then it's all to play for again. Does that make sense? It does make sense because I think obviously, you know, this this guy is going to be, be looking to, in the welterweight division, looking to be get back in. Action Cage Warriors might be a potential read, obviously with Bellator releasing a lot of their guys as well. So, you know, yeah. things could really spice up in the next number of months. But I, obviously I have to ask you that, you know, Ian Gary's performance uh, last weekend, he won the Cage Warriors welterweight title. And, you know, people are, are, you know, as you've just said there, people are going to ask, you know, Reese will want to be back up at that level fighting there. Were you impressed with his performance against Jack Grant? Yeah, he, he got it done. Um, you know, obviously unfortunate circumstances with his team. Uh, I think that played a part. I think, to be honest, I think if Ian Gar is part of his team uh, on a normal eight week, finishes Gary or he finishes in the first, I think he would have he finished him early. I think um, that had an effect on performance. Whether he maybe admits it or doesn't, I'm not too sure. I'm not. I'm really not sure. But um, yeah, he he got it done, and and he has the belt now. So um, yeah, it's just <laughs> the belt doesn't motivate me. The names yeah. don't really motivate me just yet. Um, it's nothing personal at all. If they take it personal, then they can take it personal. But I've done it. I've got the I've got the t-shirt now, and for me, it's just it needs to be motivating and. If people take that offensive, then I'm sorry about that. But uh, yeah, so yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah. Um, so you're what you're saying that like, and I feel that you're right. Like you're the guy that's been in the UFC. You've you're the one who's been there, done that. Do you feel as though like basically what you're saying there is you know you've more to lose than than, than someone else? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, of course. Um, I think if I was to go in and fight anybody that say anybody that was in that last welterweight tournament. Mm. If I was going to win the tournament, people would say, yeah, sure, of course he would have. He was the UFC guy. He, he already basically had the belt um, when I was due to fight for it. I feel like I had the belt. Um, you know, for me, it would have been expected to win. For anybody else to beat me, it would have been like, he, he beat Reese McKee, you know, and, and I'm aware of that now more than I've ever been. So it's just like my perspective has changed. A lot of people come out of the UFC and feel like they've went down in stock where I'm like, no, I'm still bang on the money where I was, if not higher stock now that we're back in, in European level. So I'm no mug and I'm not going to, I'm not going to bite at, bite at people wanting these fights. Um, cause I, I understand that does more for them. I, listen, when I wasn't, when I never had the UFC experience, I wanted the Craig Whites. I wanted the yeah, guys that were just at the UFC. I know exactly how it is. So I have that mindset and perspective of watching people try it on me. No one's called me out in fairness. So, um, I don't think too many people want it just yet, but, um, yeah, I just know the crack. Are you expecting someone to call you out? You know, it, you know, no. I, no. Why not? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I think in the welterweight, people don't want to see come back. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, that's well, it. That's, um, yeah. Well, so so we can draw a line under you know a, a potentially in Gary fight if he doesn't get signed by the UFC. It, it, there's been rumors, obviously circling right around that he might be the next one in line. That's a fight that just doesn't interest you at the moment. No. Uh, again, it's not 
it's not that Ian doesn't impress me or it doesn't interest me. None of them really interest me at the minute. If when I do come back to Cage Warriors in say four or five, six months and he's the champion, then then that's the fight that's going to interest me. As of now, there, there's not a name in that roster that makes me think flip. You know, maybe maybe we could go now, but uh, so no, the answer is no. Yeah, it doesn't interest me at all. So if there's no name in, in the Cage Warriors roster at the moment and, you know, potentially Ian moves on to the UFC, there's obviously other promotions in Europe is, you know, you, you know, you look at somewhere like KSW, would, 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 a, would a fighter there, you know, would that roster, would that promotion interest you? Yeah, of course. It, it's new, it, it's fresh, it's, it's um, un, unwalked territory. Um, obviously, I've, I've experienced some of Poland with Norman. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've loved that. I've spoke, I've spoke with the, the head honchos at KSW. I've spoke with the head honchos at Fame, which is another conversation. But, um, yeah, like, you know, it, it do, like KSW does interest me, of course. I am still very much one eye on the UFC and how that would affect my, my image uh, or affect my... Um, them. so yeah i feel if it make, if it made me step too far away from the ufc i'll not do it um but if it's just to go in and win fights and i'm definitely interested that's why fame doesn't interest me because yeah you know i got off, i got offered a fight with fame um but it just i think sean shelby and whoever is in control would just laugh and just sign me off mm. their books <laughs> yeah 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 i think fame might um might put a few <laughs> barriers in your way of getting back in yeah. um with the promotion i think it's going to be very tough for you to get a fight that you know that's my opinion um i don't think a lot of guys are going to want to fight you obviously coming out of the ufc and obviously the second performance as, as we've talked about i thought was you know i know you you feel as though you didn't have a good night but i thought it was a very impressive performance and the fight itself was was fantastic to watch for i think um all the mma fans do you feel that as well that like that it is going to be tough to get a booking anywhere in europe because of your name now yeah, but, I mean, there'll always be someone, but I, I, I always feel um, on domestic, definitely, definitely domestic level, if not European level, that the people, people know what I'm about. People know I'm tough. People know I have the touch of death. People know um, I'm resilient. I have uh, a, a gas tank like no other. So yeah, it, it's going to be hard to get me booked as it always is. Um, but someone will be willing, and someone will be uh, up for the challenge, no doubt. So, and um, there's always dance partners. It's just if they're a good enough dance partner i was going to say to you you know cage warriors of a show coming up in san diego i think there's gonna be a lot more american fighters on there is that something that you, that you can rule out at the moment oh as of now absolutely um they do have a show in late september early october i can't rule that one out now but they would have ian dean would have to do his magic uh and get a name that that makes it enticing um so yeah, that's possible. The as for the one in America, I'm trying to get to America to train at the minute, but I know uh, I need my P or I need a visa again. So um, I'm trying to get that sorted as we speak and stuff. So there's a lot of a lot of moving parts, but yeah, you can definitely rule San Diego out. So it's pretty. It's it, it's all dependent on what kind of an opponent you can get for your next match. So it, it could be you know early next year, maybe even. It, yeah, it, it could be, it could be October this year. I'm I'm definitely not against October. It just needs to make sense. It just yeah. needs to. It just needs to. You know, people. I think people will listen to this interview and probably think Reese sounds really unmotivated. But I'm actually more motivated than ever to the point where I, I know what I need and I know what I want. I'm not willing to take another loss over a risky fight where I slip up and make a mistake, which I don't think I will. But I mean, there's always this opportunity, isn't there? So, um, for me to do that would have to make a lot of sense. So. We'll see what Ian Dean. Ian Dean's a fantastic matchmaker and he comes back with a lot of good stuff. If not, we'll see what Europe has. And, you know, there's a lot of conversations to have. And again, so many moving parts, but I'm motivated and ready. And, and the eyes are still on the UFC, that's for sure. Not has, there be, has there been many conversations, though? I think that's what people will, will want to know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been approached. I've been approached. Uh, Brave. I mean, Brave offered me a really good fight, uh, one that I, I really, really liked. Um, uh, but it was on three, three and a half weeks notice to fight in Belarus. Okay. Um, you know, if the, cir if the circumstances was different there, maybe I'd already have fought and I'd maybe be into my second fight with Brave, but um, Brave talked, Fame talked, KSW talked, Octagon have talked, EFN have talked. Um, so I have loads of options. I have loads of options. Cage Warriors have talked. Um, so loads of options. Um, but... It just needs to make sense. That's that's the main thing. You know, a lot of these shows are firing 
firing purses that you the UFC didn't even provide. Right. Um, but for me, it, it's it's still not about that. It's not about the payday. You know, I could get a lot of money, but that's not where that my credit knows me. I'm not money driven. Um, I want I want the stuff that's prestigious, and for me, that's being back in the UFC. I, I completely agree with you. Um, I, I totally agree. That's the the place I, I think everyone wants to be. It's it's no uh, no denying that. Listen, um, I have to ask you. You mentioned there as well. Um, you're going back over state. So I, where are you going? Are you going over to, to? I think Mason's over and um, you, you obviously trained a lot with Mason. He's come over to you. I think in Balamina, you've gone over to Wales in the past. Is the team alpha male? No, well, alpha male. I think they're a bit light. I'm I'm getting heavier. Yeah, and that's heavier, true. So, yeah, you you do uh, look like a light heavyweight at the moment, Reese. So I was I, I didn't want to offend you, but <laughs> <laughs> like um yeah, I'm sitting at the two hundred pound mark now. Wow. So um I uh I, I think them boys are a bit light. I, I would like to go to Sanford. Um, I know oh, wow. like Henry Hoof there, and uh, I don't know if Kamar Usman's still there, but I know Gilbert Burns and. Um, there's a lot of big UFC welterweights are there, Vicente Luque and stuff like that. So for me, I want to rub shoulders with uh, UFC welterweights and get in that that kind of bubble again. So um, that's kind of where my head's at. Heading towards Sanford. Um, if, and, you and know, you, I, I, have you I, talked with Henry? Yeah, yeah, I spoke with Henry, and Henry's a good guy. You know, we we spoke a lot after the Cam's out fight. So. Um, and that excites that really excites me but it's just the the world's in a mess yeah, right now where you course. can't even leave, you can barely leave your house never mind go to america so um that's where we're at but you know wherever that's if i could go if i could go next week i'd be away next week um so as soon as i can you, you'll see me on a flight and then again that I, I want to go away with with no fight in mind i don't want to go away with a fight signed um, I think I owe myself to my I owe that to myself at this point in my career where I go away and train and improve and it's something since I was seventeen I haven't had the chance to take a break so um, again not to, I'm starting to ramble but um, <laughs> not. I, I I don't want it it's not good enough for me to go back to cage wars and beat these guys because I'm better than, I'm better than them guys and better than domestic level I could go in and win the cage wars belt in one or two fights no problem but the the fact of the matter is I, I wouldn't have improved I would be the same fighter and then I go back to the UFC and the same circumstance would happen I'm looking to, I'm training now for my UFC return that's where I'm at and tell me would you do a, a fight camp over there for your next fight oh yeah for sure for sure i'm looking to do a, i'm looking to do an eight to ten week window to kind of get used to them then come home for say four or five weeks book a fight before i go and then do 10 weeks for a fight camp there that's that's exactly what i'm looking to do so um yeah Th but there's no secrets on my plan that would be some gym to do and then obviously you know those guys they're absolute you know savages that uh henry who is, is is producing with um sam for mma just look at the the names as you said you know current ufc um welterweight champion um reese okay I, I gotta ask you obviously big fight coming up from an irish point of view i want to get your prediction on it uh conor mcgregor and, and poirier three uh you know what's your thoughts on that fight it's, it's a big one yeah i think it's interesting i think Obviously, won the the first fight so many years ago, and then Dustin won the second one. I think I think what's dangerous about this third fight is Dustin's beat Connor in Connor's game. Uh, so Dustin's knocked Connor out when that was meant to be Connor's thing. That was meant to be you know, if he's going to beat him anywhere, it would have been wrestling. But the fight and striking means to me that he still has a wrestling card to play. Um, so I think it's I think it's a dangerous fight for Connor to take. I think it's a da I think. I think Dustin should have went and fought for the title. Personally, he said the only thing he wanted was the title, and then he took the money fight with McGregor. So, um, but just to me, it just you know you went against everything you said. Uh, who wins the fight? I'll never pick against McGregor because I just don't believe in picking against him. But um, I don't know. I think I'm really not sure. I think um, I think Dustin Poirier has more cards to play than McGregor, but I think McGregor's cards are stronger. Oh. There we have it. There that's we have a good, it. That's a bit of philosophy for you. There you go. You, 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 some some philosophies today you've thrown out, Reese. It's it's been fun. Listen, my man, I, I can't wait to see you back in there. I think everyone's excited. We haven't heard from you in a while, and I think that's clarified a lot of um, the, your situation at the moment. So so I do appreciate you stopping by and chatting with me. And I, listen, Reese, I'm looking forward to seeing you get back in there, and uh, hopefully before the end of the year, from a selfish point of view, for us getting to yeah. to watch you compete, Reese. I always appreciate the time. Right. Before I go, I need to give a shout out to the the world champ, Mr. Joe McColgan. Uh, exactly, what a stud! Um, what a stud! I just think I think uh, it's important that we acknowledge uh, Fat Joe. Uh, <laughs> amazing for the sport. And I, I was so um, 
I was so happy and emotional to see him win. So um, I just want to give a shout out to Joe because he's done a lot for the Irish MMA community, and he's he's always been one of them guys. He's one of the good guys, and I think Massively. Um, I think I, I really hope he gets his break in the UFC, and I wish him all the success in the world. But um, Joe's a really good guy, so I just I want to, I want to make sure we mention them. Hundred percent. I'm I'm gonna be chatting to Joe soon. I'm gonna make a make a point of that. And listen, as you said there, I, I holler your sentiments. One of the great guys in the Irish scene. You know, always so. So good with his time, and I think you know it, it was just it was a good story to see Joe, yeah. you know, win that yeah. title. He's deserved it. He's worked so hard for it. And even Joe was said, and you know this that you know that was you know bigger for him than even a UFC contract, and the UFC contract could yeah. could follow now. So uh, yeah, I totally agree with you That's about amazing. John McCallaghan. Reese, listen, my man, always appreciate the time. Uh, looking right. forward to seeing you get back in there, my man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for checking out the video. If you want to see more videos like this do hit the subscribe button and also the notification button so you don't miss any future updates. You can also catch us on social media and also give the video a thumbs up. It does help. Thanks, guys.